go. Hi, my name is Jessica Anuskevich, and I'll be doing my pathophysiology project on Lyme disease. And I wanted to just do a very brief overview of the life cycle of the tick that's associated so that you'll understand how you can get it or how people have gotten it. So basically, the bacteria that is associated with Lyme disease, which causes the infection, is called Borrelia burgdorferi, or sometimes called BV. And what I always thought was that you, people came in contact that the tick um, somehow had this from, got it from the soil or got it from some other way. But now I know from looking at the life cycle of the tick that the tick actually, which is Ixod scapularis, sometimes called black-legged tick, and also called deer tick, um, that tick is mainly on the East Coast and the Midwest, or parts of the Midwest, but most mostly like kind of closer to the East Coast. I mean, the, the range is starting to spread, but for now, that's what researchers say. And the other tick associated is Ixodes pacificus, which is usually in the Northwest and the West. And both are associated with Lyme disease. The scapularis species is more associated though. So basically, this tick, the BB, or the, sorry, the Ixodes species of tick, will lay its eggs in the spring and then those eggs, as they develop, will become larvae, and those are basically like an adolescent tick. So, but the, once they reach that stage, they want to look for a host. The most common host is the white-legged mouse, sometimes birds, and once that tick bites the mouse, that's where it actually gets the Borrelia burgdorferi bacterium, which is a spear shape. And spear shade just denotes that it's sort of a spiral, uh, circular shaped bacterium when you look at it under a microscope. So the way ticks work is they usually, at every different life cycle, they will look for a different host to feed upon for survival. And since the host changes in the proximity of the tall grasses and the wooded areas that they live in, they have to find a host that's available. So they actually will wait on the blades of leaves or grasses and they're ready to pounce as soon as they see a host. So once that the tick goes from the adolescent stage, let's say, into the adult stage, then that host will look then that tick will look for a bigger host. And that host a lot of times is humans, white tailed deer, or just any mammal that it can bite. Uh, that tick basically then then the adult ticks will breed, they'll actually they'll go dormant over the winter, although they can still bite in the winter time if it's above freezing and then the cycle just continues. So eggs, larvae, nymph. Nymph I actually would probably be more of the ad, ad, adolescent stage and then you have the adults and it's the females and the larvae that generally do the, uh, the biting of the host and then it just, just keeps going. So there's a couple things that you may want to know about ticks. A lot of times people can't feel when ticks bite them because they have a type of um, anesthetic in their saliva and that will numb the bite so you don't actually even feel it. And when ticks bite you, they have a feeding tube that will, it's like a little straw goes into the host and basically will just suck blood from the host and it can be um, as soon as it gets that feeding tube in, it can be on there for hours or even possibly days. So the sooner that you can detect the tick on your body, if that's possible, and get treatment with antibiotics or remove the tick, the better. So uh, the greatest time to get infected with the black-legged tick is in late spring and summer. And I would say so that would be from say May until September, sometimes even up to November, depending if it's a warm fall. So basically I just wanted to go over this uh, so that everyone will know a little bit about the life cycle of the tick and that will help with prevention of even getting Lyme disease. So I hope this is helpful and thank you for watching my video.